this is Catherine of Fit Armadillo, the fitness company that lets you enjoy fitness at your place and your pace. And I'm here today because it is Titan and Tone Tuesday. Last week for Titan and Tone Tuesday, I went over part one of a two-part series called the Sitter's Workout. If you were here last week, you know that last week was all about the warm-up part of the workout, and this week is going to go over the strength training component of your sitter's workout. If you missed last week's video and you want to check out the warm-up part of this workout, all you have to do is click on this link up here and you'll get to head back to the warm-up. In order to do the workout with us, you're going to need to gather these items I have listed here. For the strength training part of the sitter's workout, there are 10 moves, and I'm going to list them all right here. I'm going to demonstrate each of these moves for you. But what you'll notice by looking up the moves is that they're all moves that are going to work more than one muscle group at a time and have you moving more dynamically than a more traditional workout might do. And this is for two reasons. One is to make your workout more efficient. And the other is to make sure that since you've been sitting for a long time that you're really getting a lot of movement in your body and not sitting while you're performing your string training moves as well. The only two exercises I have on there that are really only focused on one muscle group are the two I have for your shoulders. And that's because when we're sitting for a long time, we can tend to have not so great posture and we want to make sure that we're preventing that from happening by strengthening our shoulders so we're not hunching over while we are sitting if we have to do that for our work. So grab your workout supplies and let's get started. For the dumbbell suitcase lift and walk, you're going to need one dumbbell which is your suitcase. And we'll start with the lifting part, so you're gonna have your dumbbell down on the floor by the outside of one of your feet. To lift that dumbbell, we're gonna start by squatting down and picking up. So as we squat down, our knees is forward. We're gonna bend at our knees. Our knees should never go past our toes in any squat. And our back is flat. It's not parallel to the ground, it's on a diagonal, but it is flat. We're gonna grab that dumbbell, Press our weight through our heels and lift it up, and then we're going to walk. So we're going to walk forward, and when you get to the end of the area you're going to walk to, you're going to squat down again in order to place your dumbbell on the floor. So again, squatting down here, putting my dumbbell on the floor, bringing myself up by pressing my body weight through my heels, and then I'm going to turn around and grab the dumbbell on the opposite side. To start, I'm going to squat down. Grab that dumbbell, press my weight through my heels to come back up to standing, and then walk across. So you're going to repeat this move for a total of a minute, squatting down to pick up your dumbbell, walking across the floor, squatting to drop your dumbbell off, and then turning around so you're lifting that dumbbell with the opposite hand. You want to make sure your abs are tight every time you go to lift up that dumbbell because you're only lifting on one side so you don't want to be turning over towards that side. You want to have nice strong abs so you're lifting straight up for control. Only going to do that one time, but we're going to time it for a minute. After you've done your suitcase lift and walk for one minute, you're going to do a unilateral chest fly on your stability ball. To get into position, you're going to roll out on your stability ball and you're going to have your shoulders and head resting on the ball. Once I have my shoulders and head resting on the ball, the next thing I want to check for is to make sure that my body is really stable. So I have a nice straight line here, my legs are strong, holding my body up, I'm not letting my hips sink, and I'm not arching or just doing something weird. So you want to make sure you have a good base of support here before we grab our free weights for our unilateral chest fly. And then to do the actual move, you're going to have your arms up here right above your chest. And then this is a unilateral chest fly, so we're going to move one arm at a time. That's the unilateral part. So I'll start by moving my left arm out to the side here on an arc with a little bend in my elbow. And back up. Same thing on the other side. Now as I'm doing this, once you try it, you're going to realize that that ball is trying to move, so you have to really keep your abs tight to resist that movement. One arm comes down, and then back up. So you want to do this for 10 to 12 times total on each side before moving on to the third move. And then you'll come back to this move for your second set. So as I said, 
said, we're going to alternate that unilateral chest fly I just showed you on the stability ball with another move. And that's going to be a bent over alternating row. So you'll start with your feet about shoulder width apart, a little bend in your knees, and then you're actually going to come down so you can get your back nice and flat. So here's my starting position. For a normal row, we usually bring both arms up together and back down. What we're going to do here is a little different because it's our workout just for people who are sitting a lot during the day. And so we want to try to work on a little bit of torso rotation. So as we lift one leg up, we're going to bring the other leg down towards the floor. So head facing down, I'm going to row my left arm up and bring my right arm down to the floor and then switch sides. I'm alternating. Right arm comes up, left arm goes down. As with any row, I'm leading with my elbow to bring the weight up and keeping my back nice and flat so I'm not going to round the back at all as I do this move. Now I am getting some rotation here because I am dropping that weight down to the floor. During the workout, you're going to do 10 to 12 repetitions of that move and then you're going to do a second set of unilateral chest flies on your stability ball followed by a second set of your alternating bent over rows that I just showed you. But we're going to move on to keep this video short so I can give you a quick overview of the whole workout. This next move is the first of those two shoulder exercises I was talking to you about. And basically what we're going to do is get into tabletop position to start. And tabletop position is just when you're kind of looking like a table. You're on all fours and you want to make sure that your palms are right below your shoulder and that your knees are right below your hips. And you want to check your back there so you're not arching your back or letting it sink down. You have a nice flat back, so make sure your back is nice and flat. During the move, we're going to be looking down at the floor. And what I'm going to have you do during the move is raise one arm up at a 45 degree angle to your body. So this is straight. This is at a 90 degree angle. But we're going to go in between those two positions, a 45 degree angle. And we're going to complete 10 to 12 reps on each side and then do a second set during the workout. So I'm on all fours supporting my body with my palms and my knees and then I'm going to lift my one arm up out to the side squeezing the shoulder muscles to hold the arm up and then bringing it down and you don't have to touch the floor in between moves. Abs are tight here. Now even though we're focusing on the shoulders of that arm that's lifting up we're also going to be working the other arm that's supporting our body. And again, when you're done on this side, you're going to repeat on the other side. In between moves, if you wanted to give a little break for your hands, you could always sit back into child's pose for a little bit of a stretch. This is going to feel like a good stretch for your shoulders. You could also bring your arms down to the side here and get a nice stretch. The fourth move I want to show you is a lunge row with a two high. So you want your resistance band to be anchored above your head. So I'm starting in a staggered stance. My right leg is forward. The opposite arm is the one that's holding the band, nice and straight. And that's the one that's going to be rowing with this band. The other leg is going to be lunging. So we have a lunge, row with a tube high. I'm going to start with my legs straight and my arm extended. You're not going to see my head, but that's okay. During the move, I'm going to row with my left hand as I lunge with my right leg. So I'm rowing here as I'm lunging, and you can bring your right arm forward and come back. Rowing and lunging, pressing through that front heel as you stand up. During the workout, we would do 10 to 12 repetitions on one side before repeating on the other side. And that way we would have two sets of this exercise and we would do those back to back because we're able to switch from one side to the other. Move number five is our plank lunge one leg deadlift. So we're actually going to do our plank on an elevated surface so you have either your bench or your chair and we're going to get into plank position. Your shoulders and palms are aligned and you have a nice straight line from your shoulders down to your toes. You want to make sure your feet are close together here as well. Abs are tight. So here's our plank part of the move. Then we need to do the lunge and the deadlift. For the lunge, we're just going to bring our right foot forward into a lunge. For the one-legged deadlift, we're just going to stand up on that right foot. So we're going to press through that heel and stand up. Then we're going to repeat the move on the other side. So we're going to get into plank, bring that right foot back. We're 
we're doing our left side here, so left foot comes forward for that lunge. And then we're doing that one leg deadlift by just standing up on that left foot. Plank, lunge, one leg deadlift. Plank, lunge, one leg deadlift. During the actual routine, you would complete that exercise for 10 times on each leg. If you wanted to progress the move, you could hold dumbbells in your hands as you perform that exercise. Move number seven is your dumbbell push-up with rotation. So to start, we need to have our dumbbells. We're going to get into push-up position. So we want to make sure that our palms and our shoulders are in line and that when we're in this position, we are a nice straight line from head to toe. Now we need to do a push-up. So we're going to come down. Do our push-up, but then we have a rotation. So I'm going to bring this arm up and then bring it down and rotate on the other side. So let me do a few without talking so you can see it a little bit better. Push up first. And as I come up, I'm lifting on this side, looking at that dumbbell, and then bringing it down. Same thing on the other side. So I have my push-up here. And then I'm rotating, looking up at my dumbbell, and then bringing it down and repeating the move. For that move, you want to do 10 to 12 repetitions total. This exercise and the next exercise I'm going to show you are a three exercise circuit. You're going to go and complete the third move first before you do the whole circuit again. We're going to hold a lunge, and as you hold that lunge, we're going to do a one arm row. So you're going to get into position by bringing one leg forward into your lunge. As you lunge down, your front knee is going to be in line with that front ankle, and then you're going to lean forward here. So you have a nice diagonal line in your body. While you're holding this position in your lunge, your leg's gonna get tired, but you're also gonna row your dumbbell up and down, leading with your elbow, as always. And your dumbbell is gonna be in the same hand as the leg you have forward. So I have my left leg forward and my left arm here by the side. I'm making sure my body is on that diagonal, and I'm gonna row up, leading with my elbow, and back down. Exhale to bring it up, inhale to lower down. We're going to do 10 to 12 repetitions of this before switching sides. This last move is a side lunge with your weight. So you're going to do a side lunge up to your side, but you're going to bring your weight along with you. So you want to start off making sure your legs are nice and wide apart. I'm going to start with my weight on one side of my body. So I'm going to start with my weight on my left side of my body. And then I'm going to do a side lunge in the opposite direction, which for me is going to be towards the right and I'm gonna bring my weight down towards that opposite side. So starting left, lunging down to the side, dropping my weight down to the floor, and then bringing it back up. Side lunge right, and up to the left. And I'm gonna do this 10 times on this side, and then I'll repeat it on the other side. So bringing my weight to the other side of my body, side lunging towards that opposite side, touching the weight down, and back up. As I lunge, all my weight is in the heel of the leg where I'm bending. So, so all my weight's going to be in the heel of this leg, and then I'm going to press through that heel to come back up to the standing position. Again, 10 reps on each side. After you've completed your side lunge with the weight tap, you're going to go back and complete the previous two moves again, since they are part of a three-move circuit. So you'll go back and complete a second set of your push-ups with a rotation, a second set of your lunge hold with a one-arm row, and a second set of your side lunge with the weight tap. From there, you'll move on to the last exercise in your sitter's workout strength training routine, which is the lying three-way shoulder lift. So now we're on to our last move. If you've been doing the workout with us, you're probably feeling a little tired, and we are gonna be down on the floor, but we're not gonna take a nap. Instead, we're gonna work the back of our shoulders again. We're gonna lift and lower one of our arms, and I'm gonna take you through three positions for that arm. So first, get into position by making sure your feet are together, Lying down nice and straight. The arm that you're not working is just gonna be along your body here. So your hand will be right along your hip, basically. And you can rest your head down on the mat. I'm gonna still talk to you for a little bit. Every time you lift your arm, you wanna focus on using the muscles in your back here and using your shoulder muscles to lift that arm. So you don't want your chest to be coming off the ground. And you can do at least 10 repetitions at each of these three spots. So we're gonna start by extending our arm that's going to be working out nice and straight in front of us, resting our head down, and then lifting that arm just a few inches off the floor and back down. You don't need to touch the floor. So 
So think here about exhaling to squeeze up, inhaling to lower down as your head is in contact with the mat and your chest is not lifting. Exhale up, squeeze, inhale down. Second position is 45 degree angle from your body. So find that position, rest your head down and then lift up and down, squeezing those shoulder muscles to lift that arm up. And finally, we'll try a set with our arm at a 90 degree angle to the body. Head faces down, lifting up, and bringing it down. Exhale up, inhale down. Keep your head down on the mat when you do it, even though I'm looking at you right now. And that's your last exercise. So once you repeat it on the other side, you are done with your sitter's workout and you can move on and do your cool down. Now that you've watched this video, I want you to take action now. Leave me a comment below this video telling me if you plan on completing the sitter's workout on your own, or if you plan on taking a few of the moves and putting them into your regular workout routine to help strengthen your body and counteract some of the muscle imbalances that you can get from sitting a lot during the day. Do you know someone who sits a lot during the day that could benefit from this video? If so, I would love for you to share this video with them and with your friends on social media because if they're on social media, they're probably sitting for some part of the day checking their Facebook posts, right? So make sure to spread the word, spread the video to help someone else out if you learned something by watching this video today. As always, thank you so much for spending your Tuesday with me and watching this week's Titan Antone Tuesday video. I hope you have a great week, awesome workout, I would love to hear your thoughts on the sitter's workout routine if you try it, and I hope to see you next week.